Okay, Calvin, this one here is one of my favorites. Okay, describe what it looks like. What's that look like? What color? Green. Okay, and look at the center. What's at the base of the leaves? What color is that? Red. Right in the center, red. Mm -hmm. Okay, now sometimes these will get little berries on them, but the way you really know what they are is you smell them. Mm -hmm. Smells like peppermint. Yep, chew on it. Should taste almost like a gum. It does. Peppermint gum. Okay, you like it? Mm hmm. This, this one here would be really good as a tea. It's wintergreen. In summer, the berries start out greenish white, but by late fall and even into the winter, the berries remain on the plants as a bright red with white insides. Okay, Talvin, point to the leaf of the plant you just learned. This is your test. Now, are you sure that's the right one? Yes. Okay, smell it, make sure it's the right one. All right, good job. Good job, buddy. <laughs> okay, Calvin, so here's the look alike for wintergreen. Now, what was it that you saw that makes it not wintergreen? No red stem. Yeah? Now, you want to try and smell a little piece? Does it smell like wintergreen? No. Uh, this is called myrtle, and you don't want to eat this one, even though it looks just like it. Even though it has the like, glossy leaves, just like that wintergreen, right? But you can also see it doesn't have the berries. And the leaves grow up the stem, whereas with the wintergreen, the leaves grow at the top of the stem, right? For our next edible, there's one that looks just like this one here. That is really edible and tastes really good. It's called the wild carrot. Okay, but this is not it. And the main way you tell the difference between them is the one that's edible has hair on its stem. Do you see any hair on its stem here? Look really close. Mm -hmm. No, and you see how it's got purple splotches on the bottom? Mm -hmm. This is hemlock. And this is extremely poisonous. What's that from? That's from uh, different bugs that put their eggs in there. But this is really, really poisonous. Just a very, very little bit would actually kill you. So you don't ever want to touch it. You don't want to go near it. And always look for the hair. You see no hair on this stuff, okay? You see the flowers on it? Mm -hmm. See how they're spread out? Mm -hmm. They spread out into like little clusters. They're not tight together. Mm -hmm. That's the other difference between the hemlock and the wild carrot. Well, whenever you're learning edibles, you want to learn the poisonous ones that look just like it. Otherwise, you could make a mistake because there are some that are really poisonous that look just like the edibles. So you need to know the difference. So I always did my homework and I searched to see what ones look like this edible but are actually poisonous. Okay, Calvin, here's the one I wanted to show you. What's this right in the center of it? Right here. What do you see in the center? Berry. No, not a berry. What color is it? Purple. Yep. Flower. There's a purple little flower right in the center. Do you see hair on the stem? Mm hmm. Point to the purple flower on the center. Good. And do you see hair? Yes. Where? Point. Okay, good. So, what is this called? Do you remember? This? Wild carrot. Yep. Also known as Queen Anne's lace. Because huh? the white uh, frilly parts look like lace. So, Calvin, if it did not have the purple flower in the center, and it didn't have hair in it, what would you do? Just leave it alone. Why? What would it be? Hemlock. Good. Good job, buddy. Okay, Calvin, get in smell. Mm. What's it smell like? A real carrot. Yeah, that's why it's called wild carrot. Actually, all the carrots that we're eating now were derived from this wild plant. 
and the Queen Anne slice. The wild carrot is just as edible as the domestic varieties that we eat today. In addition to using the flowers and stems for identification purposes, you can also tell the two plants apart by the smell of their root, although we don't advise even touching the hemlock. Once you feel this stem and tell me what shape it is and look at it. What is it? Rectangle. Yeah, yeah, or square. You feel how it actually has corners to it? Isn't it cool that a plant could do that? Make a stem like that? This, now take it and smell it. Crush it and smell it. Isn't that yummy? Okay, so this is a mint. <clears throat> now you see how the flowers grow in a cluster wherever the leaves touch? Mm -hmm. You see that? What color is that flower there? Yeah, Pink, pinkish, purple. purplish, yeah. And then these leaves, see how they come out and they're long and have little teeth on them? Mm -hmm. Whereas this one is That's smooth. Blade of grass. Yep, yeah, blade of grass is smooth. But you can use it to compare to the teeth on this leaf here. Okay. You can actually feel it. Yeah. It's like jagged. We'll pop another one in your mouth. Now we'll make some tea, okay? Daddy, when he was camping, teaching survival, Almost every night, I'd make mint tea. Because usually where it grows, you'll find a bunch of it. It likes moist soil. It's really good for your tummy too. So, we'll just have it simmering a little bit, okay? And when you put them in, you want to squeeze them. We call it bruising it. So you want to bruise it a little bit. It smells so good. It I know. So you got the mint in there and the wintergreen. Where's the wintergreen? Right here, buddy. See the glossy leaf? What color is the stem on the leaf? Red. Yes. Yeah. Nice and cool. Cool you off. What do you think? It's like water with the zinger mint. Ooh, okay. Does it cool you off? Good. Let me try. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> that is really good. Perfect on a day where the heat index is over 100. <laughs> Learning to identify edible plants is such an important skill for survival. But we can't emphasize enough that you need to do this in a manner that allows you to work with very knowledgeable people in this field. Always use multiple sources to back up your research when studying edible plants. And when using the internet, dig deep and rely on scientific research. One example of this misinformation is all about the tiger lily. On several websites on the internet, there are claims that the pollen from daylilies is poisonous to humans. Yet we could not locate one scholarly article stating that this was true. Both Tom and I had had experience eating lilies before, so we decided to disprove this myth once and for all. <laughs>